Okay, dear students, this is the last portion, last section of the lesson. And here I'll try to explain to you about the nationalism in Asia. We'll see about uh, Japan and then we'll move on to our country. Okay, now Japan is considered to be the first Asian country to establish nation state. So, I hope by now you know what we mean by nation state. Uh, we see the idea of nation state uh, in the previous section uh, when, when we talked about uh, the new wave of, wave of nationalism across Europe and uh, a nation for them uh, the idea of nation was dependent on one culture one language okay right now the same thing we find here Japan of course and we understand they their culture is uh, unique and their language is one and so on so uh, just to understand the Japanese society we see here this picture you you could see the triangle the first one the emperor so in in this uh, category emperor uh, is the first one uh, but he is just an apex of japanese society he does not have any real powers and it is the second category of people shogun and um, daimyo it is these two people who are the rulers the actual rulers of the japanese uh, state okay now uh, this Daimyo were the rich feudal uh, lords, landowners, and shogun were the real rulers of Japan. And we have the third category uh, is a warrior category. They are the samurai, the warrior, the armies. Okay. The fourth one are the farmers and artisans, and who work under this daimyo, this feudal landowners. And uh, the fourth one are the traders who give, who lend, who are the money lenders, who give lend, uh, who give money to the farmers. And then uh, even sometimes we also find that these feudal lords they take um, loan from the traders the money lenders but still uh, even though they are very rich but still they are considered to be at the bottom of the uh, society okay right now here what happens now as we see here it is a feudal landowners the shaguns it is they who rule the country they who rule the uh, people not the Japanese people and all these farmers and artisans they are supposed to uh, pay taxes 85 percentage of their uh, produce they are supposed to uh, pay to these daimyo and the shagun these feudal lords the rulers uh, as a taxes okay but what happens uh, as the years go on people are simply uh, fed up with this they work and then they give to somebody else they are not really able to enjoy the benefits of their hard labor uh, so what happens now this paves way for the revolution and the revolt against uh, uh, shagun uh, and the feudal lords and we have the restoration of the emperor the meiji okay now here we have the fall of the shagun empire uh, the rule by the shagun uh, so what happens now it is a samurai uh, samurais the warrior class uh, who um, who gather people who assemble people against uh, the shagun as a result we find the fall of uh, the rule of the shagun and the feudal landowners and we find the restoration of the emperor or the uh, mage <coughs> now what happened this emperor uh, he knows still uh, how this da daimyo the feudal landowners are so powerful he, he doesn't really want to uh, infuriate them he doesn't want them to get angry uh, by s suddenly changing the system and therefore slowly slowly emperor uh, tries to um, bring bring the uh, basic human rights into his empire hmm? Japan we see okay now how, how he works first he sends emperor sends a japanese mission uh, to european countries to visit them uh, some he is sending them to uh, america in the year 1882 to study their constitution and prepare a report okay this constitutional study mission presented its recommendations to the emperor and a committee of experts was set up to draft the constitution so this committee did not hold any public hearings to discuss the constitution or talk to common people to get their views 
now uh, this particular uh, committee that is, that is appointed to study the constitution to write the constitution uh, of japan they never consulted with any of the people local people but rather they consulted with other foreign countries who have already uh, seen the uh, flowering of democracy in their own respective countries you no know, like europe and so on okay but uh, now here we see that a new constitution has been emerged has been written and it is declared in the year 1889 and came it is this is came to be known as the meiji constitution it was basically the model it, it was basically modeled on german constitution of bismarck okay uh, so bismarck is a person who 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 has authored the constitution of Eng uh, germany okay uh so mm, you know, based on this model of bismarck constitution uh this japanese constitution um is brought out okay now this meiji constitution states that it was the emperor's gift to the people which means emperor gives to the people the democracy so democracy is, is a gift of emperor to the people okay but it it is clearly said that emperor was supreme and all powerful okay all powers uh, are resided in him okay so authority was concentrated in the emperor and the cabinet of the ministers appointed by him uh, it is also said that the emperor will conduct the affairs of the state in accordance with the constitution okay so emperor emperor has to uphold the constitution that is very very important here okay and it has also the provision for an elected parliament but the right to vote was given only to people with property same thing that we found um, in france we also see here people who are with property are given the right to vote moreover the role of the parliament was limited okay so if there's a presence of an empire emperor naturally the role of the parliament uh, is limited okay so the constitution also conferred rights on the people such as equality before the law the freedom of religion constitutional welfare punishment only through a legal process etc but the right to freedom was limited okay so this is to show how we find a gradual gradual establishment of democracy uh, in the state of japan okay right so with that we complete and we move on to the second important part the nationalist movement in india okay right now next year you are going to study about the freedom struggle of our country but this is just a short introduction about how it all started okay so india was under the control of british nationalism in the country evolved to oppose british rule in the 1857 okay in the 1857 what happened there is a sepoy mutiny it means uh, sepoy means we know in hindi they are the army the, the soldiers soldiers who were working uh, under the british regime okay so they they were in mutiny they were against uh, they went against the british people but this mutiny was very easily suppressed by the uh, british um, uh, ruling party the government but this gave this sepoy uh, mutiny gave inspiration for other people to voice uh, for their own democracy voice for their own independence so it all started from there around 1880 the emerging middle class began to struggle uh, began to struggle to make india free democratic and modern nation unlike japan where the emperor took so in japan it is the emperor who takes the initiative but in india it's the other way okay so unlike japan where the emperor took the lead in developing the country into a modern nation state the kings of india did not play such role india had no one king india had many kings there were many small small kingdoms okay and therefore it was very difficult for uh, any unified power to take up uh, the initiative to establish nation state okay but one striking features of the emerging indian middle class was that it was made up of people of all uh, all castes religions um, of india so they were all intellectuals so we, it all begins from the middle class who were intellectuals okay who are from different castes who are from different religions we should understand okay so there were intellectuals like uh, um dada bai nauroji okay um feroz mehta and, and political leaders like bal gangadhar tilak gopal krishna gokhale okay, nationalist patriots like uh, you no know, um, so there are many people from different religion from muslims christians 
Parsis, Dalis, Brahmins, okay. People of all these religions, they came together to revolt against the uh, British regime, okay. In other words, the new middle classes um, represented the whole of India and its different communities, okay. Uh, right. One striking feature of the middle class was that most of its members had been educated in English education system. So they were, a, they were aware of the familiar, um, they were aware of and they were familiar with the democratic and national ideas that were spreading across Europe. See, all these uh, middle class, they were all educated men and women. Uh, they, they all had uh, the um, English education, they, they, they studied under English uh, education system. Therefore, they were very well aware of what was happening in those times uh, across Europe okay all right now the same thing uh, they wanted to bring it here okay so this paved way for the launching of uh, age world party in india the indian national congress in the year 1885 so this indian national congress met every year to re to review the country's political situation and and to petition the british government to introduce reforms first this uh, first, this particular Congress, Indian National Congress, was established to um, request the British government to introduce reforms. Okay, uh, so Dada by Navaroji analyzed the economic situation in India under British rule, pointing out how it was impoverishing people day by day. So he pointed out that British rule impoverishes, makes people poor day by day. Okay, there is a growing discrimination among the people, rich uh, become richer and poor become poorer. Okay, right, now from here, um, we see the mass movement after 1905 with people from all provinces joining the protests against the Br British rule. Exactly what happened in US happens in India. Though it was late, but still it was good. There were also uh, underground revolutionary groups who felt that a violent armed rebellion was the only way of freeing the country from the British rule. Okay, and now we we come across uh, Chandra Bose. Okay, Subhas Subha, um, Subhas Chandra Bose, and they say uh, one group. They consider that only by taking arms we can attain the freedom. And there's another group. Um, no, uh, which is headed by Gandhiji, uh, who say um, one, only by non-violent satyagraha we can attain freedom. Okay, so from the year 1905 to 1920, there was the age of Bal Gangadhar, Lal Bal. Um, okay, so Bal Gangadhar the luck. Okay, and Lala Lal Jab the Rai. Okay, so uh, it is these people who instill nationalism among the people. Okay, uh, so here what happens, the peasants, laborers, Adivasis, Dalis, women affected by the British policies also raise their banner of revolt. So it all begins from the lower classes, people who are uh, struggling to um, live their life, li their livelihood. And here we come uh, to a point um, of the emergence of Gandhiji, the role of Gandhiji and the freedom struggle. So Gandhi returned to India in the year 1915 from South Africa, uh, where he was leading a, a struggle against South African government for the rights of Indian community there. Okay, so Gandhiji was a barrister. So he also propagated the idea of Swaraj, self-rule. What he was doing in South Africa, Gandhi is trying to um, inculcate here in India. Okay, the idea of self-rule, Swaraj. He said the objectives of freedom struggle was not just to put an end to British rule. But to change the Indian society this is very, very, very important. Gandhi said that the object of freedom struggle is not just to put an end to British rule, but to change the Indian society. It was not in favor of a violent revolution. He always wanted satyagraha, okay, uh, non-violence. So this involved convincing the oppressors about the truth and resolve of the objectives of the movement. Okay, so uh, the freedom movement strengthened nationalism in India. Um, that even the common people began seeing themselves as part of Indian nation, binding them to a common destiny. So we we have the um, emergence of nationalism uh, in the hearts of all the people. 
people of all categories people of all religions people of all languages okay so there were people who were not really happy with gandhi's gandhi's leadership of the national movement okay they felt its momentum was too slow anything that we uh, want to achieve through non violence is always slow so there were some people who were not really happy with the way gandhi ji was uh, leading the movement of satyagraha against the against the uh, british rule and change of indian society so they felt that it did not clearly address the issues like ending inequality in india and indian society so many of the younger revolutionaries felt that an armed struggle was the only way to gain freedom from the british rule so it was a time of second world war we know what happened okay All right so some a group of young men they said no only by taking up arms we can achieve freedom fast so in the middle of all these different standards stands of thinking the country got its freedom in august 1947 okay after being divided into two nations india and pakistan the leaders of the new nation formed a constitu- constituent assembly discussed Uh, discuss the drafting of the new constitution for independent india a committee was set up under the chairmanship of dr um, b r ambedkar you know the architect of indian constitution after 3 years of deliberation and consultation the constitution was finalized and announced in january 1950 okay in short nutshell we have seen uh, how of the indian uh, struggle for independence and the um and the uh, uh social system okay social change okay next year you will study in detail about um the freedom struggle okay so with that we complete uh, this lesson on the democratic nationalist revolutions okay these revolutions um change change is very very important in the for our society okay everything changes we take human body okay we grow we change so accordingly um, everything the way of thinking changes okay the the way of choosing things changes the way of using the words it changes okay so change is a part and parcel of our life in the same way uh, this change is necessary for every country okay that's how we understand when we Uh, study about democracy and nationalism okay so with that we complete this lesson i hope you read the lesson uh, and some of you have really done well uh, the summary of this lesson but still you should uh, read everything okay thank you have a nice day